Welcome to Know Your Mobile. It's Basil here comparing the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 with the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Both of these devices pack S Pen functionality, but what differentiates them? The Note 8 obviously is a larger device, but it does have in-call functionality, so you can make phone calls. Holding this thing to your ear would look a bit ridiculous. Now, I'm six foot four and I have pretty big hands, but as you can see, even I'm finding this a bit of a challenge. It is nice and skinny, but that doesn't mean you're not going to look a little bit odd with it pressed up against your ear in a phone call. The Samsung Galaxy Note 2 at 5.55 inches is considerably smaller, though it's by no means small for a phone. Um, it packs an AMOLED display in contrast to the WV, sorry, in contrast to the LCD display on the Note 8. The designs are very, very similar. They clearly speak the same language. However, there's a lot more bezeling going on on the Note 8.0. Flipping them around, and you've got a very similar backing as well, though there's an 8 megapixel camera on the Note 2 and a 5 megapixel rear facing camera on the Note 8. The S Pens are both located underneath the back on the bottom left hand side, and the S Pen for the Note 8 is outside of it though. So now move on, moving on to the actual displays, and we have that screen technology difference. AMOLEDs historically produced deeper blacks and more vibrant colors, whereas LCDs purer whites. They both look pretty striking uh, off the bat. However, we do notice that the uh, Galaxy Note 8 looks brighter without a shadow of a doubt. Um, what you can also tell if we hold them side by side is the Note 2 does pack a higher PPI. So you will be able to make out pixels on the Note 8 a little bit easier. PPI, by the way, is pixels per inch. If we look at the actual user interfaces, both run TouchWiz. That's Samsung's skin laid over Android, and it's Android 4.0. Android 4.0 packs great, great things such as Google Now, for example. Um, not to mention all the fantastic ice cream sandwich integration that we loved, such as swiping things out of the way and the new multitasking system. Um, Touch with supplements this with a whole host of uh, enhancements, including if you put a phone to your ear while in a contact, for example, it'll ring straight through to them. It's very heavy. It's like going to slow down the experience slightly after a while when compared to stock Android. Um, but with a 1.6 gigahertz quad core processor in there, we don't think it'll take too much away from the experience altogether. As far as the cameras go, as we said, there's a, a 5 megapixel rear facing camera, but it's a front facing 1.3 megapixel camera on both. In terms of the processors, both have 2 gigabytes of RAM to complement those 1.6 gigahertz quad core Exynos 4s. And they, uh, there is a 32, sorry, 3300 milliamp battery in the Note 2, whereas there's a 4600 milliamp battery in the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. All in all, we're tentatively impressed by the Note 8. It looks good. It's a slim, skinny device. Um, is there a place for it in the market, especially considering it makes phone calls and it's therefore going to be quite a bit more expensive than most phones out there? We're not so sure, but we'll have to watch this space. Samsung haven't announced a UK release or pricing for it just yet. I've been Basil, this has been a Samsung Galaxy Note 2, and that's been a Samsung Galaxy Note 8. If you want a phone, it's the Note 2 all the way. Despite being announced a while ago, it's still an absolute beast. If you want a tablet that makes phone calls and still has that fantastic 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity, then it's the Note 8 for you. Thanks for watching Know Your Mobile. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. If you like the, uh, feel free to like it. Even if you like the channel, you know what to do. Just subscribe.